Hey what's going on guys and welcome to my last video of 2019 which is coming out on the 31st of December obviously it's going to be my year in review video that I'm starting off this year obviously and I'm going to keep probably keeping it going uh, every year that I'm doing this on YouTube obviously uh, today I thought I'd film in a new location we've got some really nice light in here uh, got a really nice LED big like sheet bulb above us and yeah it's probably the best lighting I have in my house unless I do a video outside and I don't do a video outside it's cold outside and it's not raining right now but it was earlier and I thought it'd just be better to do it in here this is my new house it's not complete yet this is the kitchen we've done it first so so today I kind of want to review 2019 as a whole how much I've grown, what I've learned, and what I've done wrong, and you know, everything. I just want to review everything. I want to review my best photos, I want to review my worst photos, and I think it'll be quite fun to see how I've grown over the past year. And yeah, so join me. So I'm going to start off with my photos. I've grown a whole lot since 2018, and my photo quality has risen. I've learned so much. I completely self taught. Like, if you look at my photography from 2017 to now, you're going to see a massive difference. But last year, oh, last year, last year, I wasn't that uh, committed to photography. You know, it was a side hobby. I was like, mm, this is pretty fun. Uh, so I do it when I can, which back then I was vlogging. I had a vlog channel and I'd go out with my friends and I would take photos as well while I was out. So that's mainly where I got most of my photos from, you know, it was an actual photo shoot, but now, you know, that's what I pretty much do, I don't vlog anymore or anything, all I do is photography, so I've had a whole mo lot more time to learn, and you know, a lot more time to go out there and get some experience, but let's look at some photos from 2018, shall we? So this is probably my best uh, photo from 2018, it's... A photo, we were already on a photo shoot, and this is when I was just learning to drive, so that's another thing. Uh, you know, now I've learned to drive, I can just go out whenever I want, I don't need my parents to take me to anywhere, and I can be by myself, and that has really uh, helped me improve my photography. This is actually a super nice photo, there's a few problems with it. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice, lovely photo of Willacoon Beach with just these rays coming down, these orange, gr yellow rays coming down on top of the waves and they're shining on top of the waves and oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I was just driving by really, because I wanted to drive by Woolly Coombs, it was like after we had been to the previous place. And oh my god, I saw this and I had to stop. But a couple of things I would do now if I see this scene. Um, the composition is great, you can't really improve that, you can get alternatives, but the composition is nice, you've got the black at the bottom and oh, it just goes very well with everything else, with all the storm and everything. Um, but what I'll change is exposure length, although, although it does look nice with the sun shining off of the waves, so you could probably get that with a long exposure anyway, I'm not quite sure, um, but a long exposure where it just mm, looks so much better, but uh, back then I didn't have a tripod and I didn't have any ND filters, so didn't really know what I was doing back then, it was just you know, a camera in my hand, opportunity, there you go, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely improve it with a longer exposure. And the editing side, it does look a bit grainy. I've probably turned up the clarity a bit too much on this image, which is something I've learned recently that I should not be doing. The first sort of thing I did in 2019 was we went on a holiday to, where was it, Grand Canaria? Grand Canaria, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, it was a great opportunity to get some like tropical Mediterranean photos. But back then. I was, I was improving, but not by that much. As you can see by these, uh, these photos, I tried taking some photos of some sand. 
flying through the air with a really, really high speed uh, shutter. And then all some of them look nice. You can honestly tell on some of them that it's not quite focused. And I still don't know to today how to focus that quick on something moving that quick. I just don't think the camera is quite capable of it. You have to be really lucky. And in some of these photos, the background is very nice. We've got some trees and some distractions and buildings in the background. And yeah, I mean, the lighting is just too harsh as well as midday. I think if I wait till sunset to do this, mm, like sun rays shining through onto the sand would have been absolutely beautiful. And I tried to take some photos here of God's Finger, which has been smashed now. Uh, and it just started raining, so I tried to rush and get one. But again, no long exposure, harsh lighting. Um, and here I'm in the mountains, uh, which is a wasted opportunity, really. I got some alright photos, but no real good foreground interest. Harsh lighting again, and the morning sun would have hitting those mountains would have been absolutely amazing but again wrong time of day all of that although um, doing this channel for long I've only started this channel in like June but um, I've been doing it I've been doing photography seriously probably from I'd say February or March 2019 so yeah there was a few months before I started this channel which you didn't see and I'm going to show you some photos that I got then. So here's one on my last day of college, Westwood Ho, because it's quite far from my house, so I thought I'd go after college because it's closer. But as you can see, I've got a nice, I found this nice little white pebble. Um, but if you look closely, I tried my best to revive it. It's an absolutely beautiful photo, but one problem. I didn't check the focus. I thought I was shooting on autofocus, but uh, I was on manual. These photos are this lovely rock with a white line going through it. Absolutely beautiful, but one problem. But I think the problem in this one is the log isn't quite level, and I don't know. It just doesn't. It's not balanced the image. Because the top half, there's more of it than the bottom half, if you know what I mean. Because the log acts as sort of like a barrier, like a halfway point, And it needs to be about half and half. And it's just not quite there. Oh, this one is terrible post-production of this uh, sheep down at Mort Point. Oh, really, really overexposed the original image was. And I tried my. I, it was a nice photo because there was sun shining on the side of the sheep and it looked really nice. But I tried to recover it uh, by turning down the highlights and turning down the whites. <laughs> but look at that sky. Ah, oh, lovely. That is absolutely lovely. Like this photo of Mort Point uh, as the sun hits the side of it. Oof. The clarity is way, way, way too high. And the original image did not look anything like this. Hi highlights are completely down, shadows are completely up, and oh, uh, in the field, what I should have done was uh, got a different exposure or uh, exposure bracketing for that. This one, terrible, terrible composition. I don't even know what I was thinking here of this hill with the sun hitting it, and you can see uh, over there's Baggy Point. Is that yeah, Baggy Point? Uh, which is that long bit of land sticking out by the sea. Uh, very peculiar image because you've got this line of land going through the middle and this hill in the, in the left side. Not very balanced. This is one of my favourite photos though. I've actually printed this one out of these fox gloves, these pink fox gloves with the glow of the sun hitting the side of the hill and this is when I was like, wow, that is actually pretty good. I could actually do this for a living. So then, yeah, I went, I went to do uh, some seascapes, and as you can see, as you can see in this photo of this bush um, with the grass and the clouds in the background, I saw this really nice cloud formation in the back, and I was like, ooh, I need some good foreground interest. So mm, 
composition is not very good. The plant is actually above the horizon and post-production is terrible. I've turned up saturation way too much and it kind of looks really dark in the corners and oh, it just looks really sickly. Well this one is... I found this log, this little dead log at the top of the hill and then at more point I took it all the way down. So I kind of wanted to get like a really nice composition and old foreground interest. Um, but as you can see it kind of went wrong. I mean it's an alright image but uh, I don't know. It just doesn't look balanced, doesn't look pleasing to the eye. But I did improve because uh, I, w I think I watched Thomas Heaton's video around then of he was like going on about so yeah he was going about this tree above the horizon so I was like oh wow and that's how I learned so now I've tried to get this log below the horizon but it just looks squished in and this one it would have been a really really nice photo this sunset at more point but but it could have done with a long exposure really and I don't know why I didn't do a long exposure then but it didn't turn out that nice so here's a photo uh, from my first actual video on YouTube and yeah it's looking down at some waves down at Wild Pear Beach which I couldn't get to um, and I, it's actually a really nice photo and I think this is when I began to really, really improve my photography. Long exposure, sun hitting the waves, sun hitting the rocks. Absolutely fantastic. There's nothing I can really moan about about this image. If you guys have some criticism, go ahead. Ah, the one of my first sunrise shoots. Look at this. Oh, it's so bland. The sun was completely blocked. Uh, down at Broad Sands Beach, so I woke up at like five o'clock for this bloody thing, and yeah, it turned out terrible. Someone's completely blocked, and the image is just so white and bland. And oh, in this situation, I would have just found something else, like I did after, which was this amazing cave reflection. I found a cave, and the sky was reflecting in the cave because it was so calm, and it just looks really nice. There's a bit of rock going through the middle of it, and it slices it up, and it looks really abstract. I like it. This one is one of my first uh, super long exposures, which I've done at Lee Bay, and because it was so long, <coughs> the camera had <coughs> time to capture the light reflecting off the water, and the whole image looks really blue, even though it's sunset. And I really, really like it for some reason. It's just a really, really nice blue image. Everything looks so calm and tranquil. And here's one of my worst <laughs> Photoshop abominations. Uh, this one I went down to Lee Bay. Ta a completely terrible photo shoot. I didn't even record this one. Um, <coughs> but I tried to do some uh, exposure bracketing. But oh my god, look at it. It's terrible. This one from it's through a little gully. And... The sun is, oof, it just doesn't work. And in this situation, I think I would have got a an exposure that was an exposure that was slightly darker for the sky, and then I would have tried to bring it out. So we had a. This was great timing because. We weren't even meant to go to this location down at Water's Mouth Beach, but it turned out really, really nice. But I made a few mistakes of this one down the river. As you can see, the sky is super overexposed, and there's no breading that out, and it just ruins the image. Plus, I've turned the saturation up way too high, and oh, it just looks awful. And again, with the initial sunset of it. I've turned the clarity up too much and I have actually artificially remo removed the uh, sun ray on the water as you can see the sun ray is actually on the water in, in some of the other images but on this one I decided to remove it. It does look natural but there's something missing from the image and I think people can tell that 
so that's why I didn't really like it. Oh, this is my first uh, and my most successful YouTube video so far of me, my first time wild camping, which went terribly wrong because there was a thunderstorm after. A literal thunderstorm, and I actually captured the lightning on my phone. You know, and yeah, that was really cool. But the scariest part was when we were walking back down the hill because the thunderstorm was coming. We saw the lightning strike. You could see the reflection of the lightning on the lake, on the reservoir, I mean. And it, oh my god, it was so scary. And it, it lit up the whole place. But it was. <coughs> anyway, uh, this was a nice sunset. It's really, really red, really beautiful line of sunset. But, um,. I just don't think the composition was that good on this image. I don't know, it's just... It's like layered, there's several layers to the image. I do like it, but then again I don't like it. Um, probably because there's no golden light or anything, because the sun is almost blocked, but it's just getting through with that red light. But it's a win-win situation, I think. So then we, after that we woke up for sunrise, and... Oh, one really nice image I got from this because it was quite calm after was this rock and its reflection in this little lagoon and it was absolutely beautiful Blah. so for August I wanted to get a nice photo from my August photo from my calendar so I was going to go up to Exmoor or somewhere near there because I had seen a whole field full of heather before but then I went to the tours, which is where I made my very first video, which was on a different channel. And I've also done a video there before on this channel. And yeah, I think this is, this is actually, yeah, this is from one of those videos. <laughs> but we're looking down at this really, really nice hidden bay. And the composition is absolutely amazing. Um, we got the heather in the foreground, lovely pink heather. It doesn't need, it's got no light because the sun was blocking the light, but with this, we're, oh, this is why I want to return to this location next August. Because if I can get the light hitting that heather and that side of that cliff, and oh my god, it will be amazing. But still, even without the light, that image holds up. <coughs> well, this image is from a video that is kind of successful. I think it's one of my second most successful image uh, video. Sorry. <coughs> but uh, this is when I went to Willacoon Beach and I couldn't it was in the middle of a storm and I couldn't think of anything to get but I, I found this nice stick and I just put it in the water and this, this, the sea was almost the same colour as the sky it doesn't even look like there's any difference so I made this, I made sure that this was black and white because there was no colour in the image at all which is something I've learned if there's no colour black and white so it's a nice image but I'm not too over keen on it ah here's a really nice one from uh, Wicked Beach as well there's a surfer usually I don't like people in my images at all but the surfer was walking towards the beach at the same time the sun was like the cloud was taking over the sun and I was like go, go away go away but as you can see I didn't remove him in post because he completes the image it just shows it's just a it's just a brilliant photo of Willacum and ah uh, it just tells you everything really tells you a whole story and it was great absolutely beautiful image that nice. I'll probably make it black and white I mean I don't think it's black and white right now I'm looking at the small image of it but I would make it black and white there's hardly any colour in it ah yes one of my favourite images this one is the pink sunset I call it so we were running down the hill um, I'll play a little clip of it now we were running down the hill because we saw the sun hitting the side of the cliff down at Hill Bay and it looked absolutely beautiful. So I was running, 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 running. We got there. We missed the sun. I turned around and I'm like, whoa, look at that. The sun had set, but after was an amazing after sunset and it, oh my God, it lit up these high altitude clouds 
hot pink and oh my god it was amazing uh, I don't know to talk about this but I messed up it was really windy really that day and I had this flimsy old tripod that you are on now which is the combat the compact uh, manifesto tripod very really light tripod which was a mistake in this situation because I took many photos that day but this is the only one that turned out pretty good and even then if you zoom in to that hill you can see that the, it's slightly blurry because the wind has moved the camera a bit and it's created a slight tiny bit of movement and it's ah uh, it, it doesn't ruin the image but it just makes that ima the image from being perfect to <coughs> this one shows the key of patience and which is something I've learnt over the past year as you can see this is a photo of the Valley of the Rocks before well at sunrise there's no nice interest in the sky there's no light it's just bland and boring anyway I waited half an hour to no avail the sun was blocked by clouds yet again as it usually is um, but I waited a little longer I was like I'm gonna hold out I gotta hold out you know it I thought in my head once the sun comes above those clouds it should shine on my it should shine on my subject and that's exactly what happened in this image as you can see the sun came up although it's not that beautiful orange glow of the sunrise which I'm going to try and get next year I think I'm going to try and head back there and get it next year but it's still amazing the morning sun hitting the top of Castle Rock you couldn't ask for anything more actually you could <laughs> saying that there's no clouds unfortunately oh, this abomination I'm really mad about this one because I went to the Wilkin Beach with my friend in the middle of summer it was really busy and complete clear skies which as you know is not that good if there's no clouds then it's not going to be that good so completely utterly clear sky the sun sets and I was rushing to find a composition and I was like oh this will have to do these this is rocks in this lagoon and oh <coughs> I exposure bracketed <coughs> again and it turned out like the one at Lee Bay which is absolutely terrible as you can see oh. well, here's where the main photography event of the year actually happened which was the Lake District and Scotland and oh my god I got some good photos but I made some foolish mistakes as well along the way <coughs> so here you can see this is Cathedral Cave and, and I just made it in time for the sun to shine through the hole and that really made the image a lot better because without light I don't think it would have been that good uh, and I've actually put it in one of my calendars because I think it's that good but as you can see in the little hole I kind of uh, turned the highlights down a little too much because it just looks really unnatural where those trees are and I think I'm going to re-edit this and turn those highlights up just a little bit but that's the only problem problem with that image I think uh, one other improvement uh, would have been having a wider lens so I can get more of that cave in but yeah I kind of broke my wide angle lens last year while walking through some uh, marshy land <coughs> and this is an absolutely beautiful uh, composition of this tree and I think it's amazing the only problem is the light was a little too harsh um, yeah, the, height was a, the light was a little too harsh and the sun was shining on the wrong side of the tree uh, and the saturation was turned up a little too much I think on that one I couldn't believe my eyes when I came across this scene we walked we walked around um, Ride of water and walked up to the cave 
and there was this mist and steam and fog coming from the cave and I was like oh my god you have to be kidding me I walked in there and there was mist coming off the water because it was that humid and oh, I'm just ashamed that it doesn't show up there on camera but it's an absolutely brilliant image and it's one of my favourites but I don't know I don't know I just there's something about it that I don't like too much I think it's my editing process I should have been a bit better on that these two trees these two uh, silver birch trees sitting on the side of the lake as the sun sets and oh my god it's an absolutely beautiful image in this case the subject's allowed to go above the horizon because there's no way you can possibly stop it um but it's oh. The, the lake's still, everything's still. Uh, the only problem is I overdid it on the post-production again, which is something I need to improve. I think post-production is my main improvement I need to work on. Because uh, oh, this one of this really nice waterfall uh, with the rainbow at the side of it, absolutely beautiful stroke of luck there as the sun comes out and it makes a really nice little... Uh, rainbow and it just brings something unique to the image but the problem I had was in post-production again I turned the whites down way too much and I don't know the river no the waterfall just looks a bit washed out it needs more whiteness to it I think I need to go back and edit these images to make them look a bit more natural my favorite image of the year my favorite sunrise shoot ever uh, and yeah it's absolutely amazing shot I woke up at like 6 o'clock went out and got the sunrise at Picklothry Dam of all places in Scotland and oh absolutely beautiful shot these small little mountains or hills and their glass reflection in, uh, in the lake or river actually it's actually a river and uh, oh, smoke on the water oh, everything going for this image every little thing going for this image <laughs> except one thing that ruined it I was not focused uh, to my best ability I was focused but it wasn't pin sharp on the mountains in the background and also I overdid it on the editing side again so it's well, I need to go back and edit most of these images that's my main problem I need to improve on 2019 uh, 2020 sorry <laughs> but yeah they, that's most of my images and most of my improvements throughout the year all my mistakes um, <clears throat> so yeah that's 2019 in review um, I was going to show my calendars, but I think I'll do that next year as something a bit more unique to the uh, video, uh, because then I have my 2019 one, 2020 and 2021, which then I'll have a, a, a bigger range of things to comment on and to show you. Uh, I think 2019 was a year to learn and improve on my skills. I've learned a hell of a lot this year. My photography compared to what was last year, this time last year, is miles away. It went from amateur to semi-professional, I guess, or professional. I don't really have an ego, so I don't want to say professional. Anyway, that's pretty much it for my year in review. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it shows you that you know no one's perfect in photography I showed you some of my worst images today and which I wouldn't usually show you in a video especially those ones those uh, exposure bracketed ones which are terrible anyway I hope you guys enjoyed please like please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video on the 1st of January I'll tell you my plans in the future